Hey, how's it going? You know what? I'm, I'm working on a project out here in the carport and I just had this insight and I wanted to share it here with you in this video. And that is the idea that, you know, in the game of life, there is so many opportunities and options for us to do what we came here to do, to create stuff, to do work in the world, to have experiences, all the things that we came here to do. There's so many options. One of the things that seems to be a recurring theme in my research and in the people that I talk to is this idea that the way to approach that is to try a lot of stuff, to try lots of things. And I still feel that's a very valid way to, you know, get a handle on this game of life and make sure that you are doing the thing that you came here to do. Because there's a there's an idea, Abraham Hicks talks about this a lot, that when you do something, then you truly know, right? You don't truly know something unless you've actually experienced it. But I want to add another aspect of this and something that I think will help you on your journey or help your children on your journey because this relates directly to children. I think about this idea that a lot of people, maybe you can relate with this, don't find their, I guess, um, the thing they love to do or their passion or the thing that they're really good at, the ikigai, so to speak, until later in life. If we can speed up that process and help younger kids get there faster, find their ikigai, find their bliss as Joseph Campbell talks about, right? Find, find the thing that makes them come alive as the great Thurman quote it say, states, you know, he said, hey, you know, do what makes you come alive. That's how you know that you found what you're supposed to be doing, right? What energizes you, what fills you up. Those are some other ideas to think about. But the, the thing that the other aspect, in addition to trying lots of things is paying attention and being aware. And I want to share my story with you here about how I finally found this path. I like to do a lot of things. I think individuals, human beings are multi-passionate, right? And multi-talented in many ways. I think we don't just have one thing, just like there's not one person, one lover, one friend we need. Variety is the spice of life. We like to mix it up a little bit. But I wanna share my story with you in this uh, video about how I gravitated towards doing what I'm doing now, which is you know, talking about metaphysical stuff, spirituality, manifestation, a little bit of personal development mixed in there. And the way that came about was over the course of like 20 years, I realized that I, well, I was actually doing all these things, reading a lot of crazy books, you know, by Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay, Leo Buscaglia, all of, a lot of the Abraham Hicks, a lot of Neville Goddard, um, New Thought Movement, Emmett Fox, those types of folks. And I was, that was always my hobby, right? And because I studied architecture and design and ultimately environmental psychology in, in college and worked in that field for many, many years in that industry, in the commercial office space planning and design industry, which I thoroughly loved. I worked with amazing people. I had amazing opportunities. It was a creative um, job. I got to have new challenges all the time and help clients solve their space planning and design issues. I really, really loved it. I loved everything about it. But over time, it lost a little bit of its meaning and I was drawn to the this, what I'm doing now, this talking about metaphysics and creating these tools and books and project and processes to help you get more of what you want in life. That's what it's all about. And so as I am on this venture now, I look back and if I had been paying attention and if I had known that this could actually be a viable road that I could make a career out of, you know, do the things I'm doing now, hosting the podcast, creating these tools, I may have gotten there faster. Now, I never believe that you should ever say, hey, well, you know, I didn't take this road at that point in time and that's a wrong thing. I don't think there's any wrong moves in life or wrong roads or wrong things that we can take. I just think that we can sometimes speed up the process by becoming more aware of what actually is going on within ourselves and in the world and where, we're, where we feel tuned in, staying really true to our internal guidance, right? Because that's what happens when you're staying aware, you're really tuned in to what you are supposed to be doing, what is gonna bring you the most fulfillment, what is gonna be able to help you share your gift with the world, all those kind of things. And so the point that I'm getting to here in this roundabout way is that in college, I'm studying architecture at the University of Utah, right? I thoroughly loved it. I loved everything about it until I didn't, right? And then I changed my major. But I love designing things. I love building things. That's why I'm working on this project here, uh, which is 
I don't work on a lot of projects anymore. A lot of my projects are digital products, projects, as you can see if you've uh, checked out my website and my uh, Focus and Flow store and whatnot. But I still love building things with my hands and I love designing things. You know, I've got the plans for this uh, project I'm working on right here in my pocket and I'm about to cut up these boards and put them together. But had I been paying attention and had I had a broader perspective of the world, maybe a mentor or a guidance counselor that was tuned in and tapped in to what the opportunities are in the world, you know, they would have picked up on this idea or this, this thing that I was doing, even though I was studying architecture, I would go to the library there on campus and I'd go to the self-help personal development section. Just gravitated toward that, right? I think all human beings have a little bit of that in them to want to improve their life and those kind of things, but I would spend an enormous amount of time there checking out books. I remember, you know, definitely I was reading Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay, Leo Buscaglia was a huge inspiration to me. I was gravitating to his work big time. And I even remember sitting in the library media center and watching a video of him when he came to the University of Utah and was speaking. And I'm sitting there watching this video. That's not the kind of thing that a lot of kids, certainly my friends weren't doing this, right? They had their own thing. Uh, that was a strange thing. You know, I didn't tell anyone I was doing this. It's just my pastime, my hobby, my so-called closet, you know, self-help, self-development um, passion there. So I was watching this video, thoroughly enjoying it, right? But as I stand now, where I'm at now, doing what I'm doing here in the online space, and I look back and it's very clear now as I look in hindsight that this is, yes, a, a natural, like, you know, uh, road for me to be on because I naturally gravitate to those things and I'm a big fan of like Mark Twain says make your vacation your vocation and you never will work right if you're doing what you love it's not really work at all as you and I both know it takes a lot to become successful it takes a lot to like make an impact in the world and if it sucks and you hate it every day you're never gonna put in the time this has been my experience as well never putting the time that it takes to rise above the noise so, so to speak to, to uh, take the word from one of my favorite brand guys, David Breyer. By the way, free plug for his book, Brand Intervention. It's super awesome. Or you can follow him on LinkedIn if you're a brand geek like me. Or if you're just in business. He has his One Minute Wednesdays and he shares a lot of super awesome information there. But anyway, segue. Um, so my point is, you know, if you're a parent, pay attention to what your kids are you know, gravitating towards, pay attention to their likes and dislikes, and also maybe look beyond that too. I th again, I think we are multi-passionate, but again, the whole purpose of life is if we can find, tune into who we really are faster, get to where we, you know, find what our, our ikigai is, our passion, our love, our gift, what the world needs, line all those things up faster in life, we can, we can have a much more rich experience. I think that's the ultimate goal. So I just wanted to jump on and share that this video with you and a little bit of my story as I get back to the project here at hand. I hope your day is awesome. I hope this video has helped you in some way. If it has, please give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who you think might benefit. Thanks so much. Have an awesome day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.